Ah, the Magic Kingdom, where dreams come true, lawmen get their hearts ripped out and eaten, Native American tribes are executed, and hideously disfigured men do horribly evil things. <sighs> Truly the happiest place on earth. Reading. I thought Pennywise only operated in Maine. Witness the Wild West as it really was. The greatest show on earth. If by greatest show you mean one full of chlamydia and lots of scalping, then yes, I guess that's accurate. Johnny Depp wears a lot of makeup and something ridiculous on his head in a movie cliche. Not only is this movie roughly six hours long, it's also about 63% footage of railroad porn. There was clearly a fierce competition for the role of grimy, mustachioed, duster-wearing deputy number three, so the director just cast everyone who auditioned. Jesus, I hope Army Hammer's character is not on his way to a village for a torrid summer romance with a questionably aged young man that's somehow critically acclaimed. There have been so many storylines crammed into the first 12 minutes of this movie that I'm genuinely wondering if I'm supposed to be caring about any of them. And, uh, what do you think of our endeavor? Looks to me like... Just a lot of men digging in the desert. Oddly enough, men digging for two and a half hours would have been just as entertaining as the final product of this movie. This break, boss! It's not that The Lone Ranger isn't eligible for a gritty reboot, especially since it's been a long time since the original series, but when Gore Verbinski imagined gritty, he literally meant urine stained and under a thick coat of mud. The future. How the hell did the Cavendish gang know exactly where John was standing from outside the door? Damn it, this movie's so concerned with the way it looks it has no idea how to actually movie. Lawyer to crazy engine. Bet you two got a lot to talk about. If Butch was going to kill Tonto in the previous scene, and one can assume was planning on doing the same to John, then why is he now chaining them up instead of shooting them? Should be slowing down, but now... Cavendish just escaped a few seconds ago, riding off into the desert, which is clearly viewable from this station. So how did the deputies not see any of it? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> funny gag! But if Tonto were clever enough to free himself from the floor restraints, he would definitely know that he's attached to John. Also, what the f*** was Tonto's plan? They're going like 80 miles an hour, and he was just gonna tuck and roll? <laughs> Great job doing that plan that we didn't discuss in the slightest. Also, how did they even know this is a bad guy? Didn't the rest of the crew ride away with Butch? Going somewhere? Yes. No. No. Yes. No. Yes. I could say this really at any point in the runtime, but movie has time for this. Honestly, if you told me this was B-roll from one of the Pirates movies, I'd totally believe you. So not one of the lawmen are gonna pick up this obvious criminal from the Cavendish gang that's completely incapacitated. I know they're going after Butch, but they've got a whole posse they could use. Hey look, it's Johnny Depp's career. Considering John and Tonto just survived this, even if that train hits them, they'll probably just stub a toe. I'm afraid I have to take you in. What the hell's up with Army's accent in this movie? Is he trying to affect a Texan dialect? Is he just trying to sound tough here and abandons it later? Does the movie really give a sh I'm here by arresting you! Man, this whole movie relies heavily on the inability of characters to see more than six inches ahead of them. Whatever you say, little brother. God damn it, we get it. Dan's been introduced as John's brother explicitly at least three times already, so this identify a sibling in dialogue bull is unnecessary and infuriating. Also, Dan sure lost his hunting boner for Butch, eh? Not only is he not attending to the several dead and injured people from the train crash, his entire posse is here for a pseudo-comic moment with John, instead of searching for the convicted felon that's scheduled for execution. Oh god, look at you. This sexual tension is so obvious that if Butch doesn't kill Dan, it definitely will. I'm not asking you to be happy about it. I am happy. I'm happy with the life you provide. Man, I found some awkward-ass timing for this relationship position heavy conversation. I hereby deputize you a Texas Ranger. Does this mean he has to immediately start doing steroids? Well, you know, because deputies Palomero and Conseco did. This is when you start wearing Indian jewelry anyway. Since my kid brother became a lawyer. Those two things are not related in the least. It's a nice hat, by the way. They didn't have a bigger one? Or a wider one? Jesus, John might as well have a sign that says moving target on his back. Oh man, they cut the shot of the Native American guy watching this with a single tear running down his cheek. Jesus, the scale and beauty of this scenery is almost sin removal worthy. And I probably would if there weren't two and a half goddamn hours of it. No! He's in the comeback, John. Nice of the snipers to take a little break and let the Reed boys have a little chat before Dan croaks. Be damn sure I'm gonna take something from you. Man, Disney really knows how to pull out on your heartstrings. How'd you get out of jail anyway? So, have we established Tonto as an unreliable narrator yet? And if so, why are we spending another f***ing two hours watching this story? But he's the Lone Ranger. hi ho credits! Half-wit, wet brain. That's racist. It takes over 45 minutes for Moody to finally declare itself. <laughs> so, if the spirit animal had showed up without Tonto there to put together his reincarnation potion, how would John have survived? And yet another f***ing instance where a character can't see more than six inches in front of them. I'm just gonna add 20 more sins for this occurrence, so I don't have to keep bringing it and my blood pressure up. Also, the sheer impracticality of getting John up here is about as high as the sheer beauty of this scenery. You find traitor. You find the man who killed your brother. Good thing Collins gave John the paper advertisement for Reds, because otherwise the movie would be over and... Oh, wait. The movie could be over? F***ing Collins. Eyes cut by the bullets that killed him. And the mask was cut out by Tonto's hobby scissors that he keeps on him at all times, just for situations like this. Good thing there was a shower and dry cleaner close to where Tonto and John were camping. 
we interrupt this lone ranger to bring you Gore Verbinski's Moulin Rouge. Wait, Daniel Plainview is here? Or is that Bill the Butcher? I always get my DDL expanded universes confused. Mom is cold. He is no longer guided by the same imperatives as other men. Here's one of the big problems of the movie, where they expect you to remember a character by name that was last seen about 30 minutes ago and barely introduced. Not to mention it's been almost an hour and John hasn't f***ing lone rangered once. I want to touch. Uh-uh. Not if you favor your hand. Awesome! We finally get that Sweeney Todd reunion that nobody asked for. Comanche violated the treaty. They've been raiding settlements up and down the river. Because we definitely needed another f***ing storyline in this f***ing slog. Fear of cat. Johnny Depp wears a lot of makeup and something ridiculous on his head in a movie cliche. Ma'am, I believe I've located your... cat. But he was already... and she'd already told him... and Tonto even... God, this movie's dumb. Let's call it a night, Joe. You can call it whatever you want. Doesn't make it any less daytime. Somehow the lone f***ing ranger has more unnecessary jump scares than a cheap horror movie. Go around back. Or you could just continue this extremely easy frontal assault on the barn that's currently on fire. Jesus, f*** this movie. Goddamn, John, I thought you were super interested in finding Rebecca and Danny. You definitely heard her scream. So she's close. Maybe you could try calling her by her name or something? You're lost, aren't you? Train tracks? I know I joke sometimes about the notes and the margins of the screenplay making it into the final script, but I would not be surprised if this is seriously the case here. Many moons ago, a boy found two white men in the desert. Wait, is this a flashback within a flashback? And how would Tonto even be privy to this flashback if he's not even in the f***ing tent? Also, this f***ing movie has more montages and flashbacks than Rocky IV. In exchange for a cheap pocket watch, the boy showed them where the river begins. But Tonto lived in a pretty sizable village. You're telling me none of the elders got involved in these conversations with these obvious outsiders? They wanted to keep the place a secret so they could one day return. The f***? These were two men armed with two guns. How did they take out the entire f***ing village by themselves? <laughs> this implies that they killed the f***ing bird. Like they used one of their extremely valuable bullets to take out the f***ing bird? And he made a vow. When he found these two men, he would drain their blood into the soil of his ancestors. Or he'll just let one of them topple off of a bridge while on a runaway train. But it'll be a really cool looking crash. My name come up? Actually it did, and it made Tonto out to be a very sympathetic figure that the Comanches should have no problem with. So why is he buried here with John? The United States Army. Finally, someone who will listen to reason. If there's anything I've learned from watching this movie, it's that Army definitely doesn't listen to reason. Also, I cannot for the life of me figure out what kind of character John is. Bumbling fool? Competent lawman? Educated buffoon? Family man? Seems like that changes in every scene. Silver Ex Machina! This works. Also, this is incredibly obvious, but why the sh couldn't they climb out by themselves? Their hands and feet aren't even bound. It's not like they're in f***ing concrete. It's basically like that time I buried my dad's torso at the beach. Going Kimusabi to find Rebecca and Danny. Oh yeah, remember them? Of course you don't, because the movie wanted to distract you with some backstory and a silly visual. It is a good day to die. Same to you. Wait, what? He's really planning on leaving him there to die? He wanted to bring in the man that brutally murdered his brother to get a fair trial, but he's just gonna leave Tonto to rot? Yeah, but no. To get into this position, John and Tonto would have had to enter through the mine, where dozens of people were watching, and there was a whole f***ing crew of mine workers in the cave, too. I know these assholes are dumb assholes, but do they really expect this to work? I had a nice smell on her. Man, Fickner tested that PG-13 rating as much as he could. This is the creepiest kid-friendly film villain since Claude Frollo. Now Wendigo must die. There's no such thing as a Wendigo. Oh my god, just f***ing kill him already. They already know there's a bigger big bad out there. I have a tribe. You have nothing. Man, seems like it's pretty early to already have a protagonist fight amongst themselves before the climax of the movie cliche, but here we are. Go back to your tribe, white coward. I do not need you. And he really doesn't at this point. Tonto wanted to kill the f*** out of Butch back on the train. So why was he even trying to get John to do it when he had the chance? Where am I? Drink. Oh. Feel better. This character was originally cast as Bill Cosby. Stupid white man. Sheesh, Johnny Depp just couldn't resist resurrecting some dialogue from Dead Man. Remember me? Butch Cavendish is working with Cole? Ask no one who has ever seen a film. The director said, let's have your character come in eating an apple. Because even though this train car is full of assholes, we want you to stand out. This shot of a train plowing through a cart full of incredibly valuable silver is just a perfect metaphor for the way this movie treated its budget. How the f*** does Tonto continue to get into these caves without anyone noticing? And I know he's in disguise now, but he didn't want Walk in there with one. Hey! I'm not even joking. This firing squad sequence has taken so long that I think they had to replace a few members due to fatigue. For God and for country, fire and will! Whoa, pump the brakes there, Barry. I thought everyone in this cast committed to giving exactly 58% total effort. What are you trying to do? Blow up the whole mountain? Trust me. These two have a hard time staying dead. Classic not answering the question. I would say they survived this, but at this point I think John and Tonto are honorary minions. Just gonna add 10 cents for all the impossible surviving. You missed something. Where'd you get the explosives? Annoying kid would be great at cinema sense. 
bring the girl. If Butch Cavendish is such a legendary wanted criminal, then how is he able to walk through this crowd freely? The town was just ready and eager to hang this motherfucker like a few days ago. What you got makes them read boys so hot under the collar anyway. Maybe I'll have a taste to find out. Of course the bad guy gets all rapey by the end of the movie. Couldn't let any cliches go untouched. <laughs> this guy would definitely be fined by Jerry Jones in 2018. Why does it go? Almost there. Prosthetic porn. Okay, I know this is probably hyperbole as told by the bullshit narrator, but in the context of this story, John's been a total fuck up. So how the fucking fuck did he suddenly become so competent? And where in the hell did he learn to fucking lasso? <laughs> what I like most about this movie is how meaty the female roles are. Truly an inspiration for future generations. Wait, the sin counter didn't realize I was being sarcastic? I guess it's also stopped paying attention. So give that sin back and send it two more times. How many times do I have to tell you to kill that ranger? That ranger? I mean, have you told him at all? You had the firing squad lined up at the mine, but that was led by Fuller. And the dynamite thing in the mountain was really Butch's idea. So f off with your blame shaming, asshole. The first train had the pin bolt under the coupling, leading Tonto to pull some shenanigans to help detach it. But we need to abandon that shit for the finale to make this conscious uncoupling easily accomplished. Nope. Little known fact, bullets were only used for shooting out glass back in the 1800s. You know, I might actually consider some of this sequence fun if it made a f***ing lick of sense. Why the hell are all these people on the train? They weren't planning on going anywhere during the celebration, considering they had a f***ing stage set up between the two trains, and they were directly facing each other. We've been here before, haven't we? And I seem to remember talking too much, which led to my ultimate capture. Even though I could have ended it very easily, much like I did with your brother and all his posse and, um, what was I talking about again? Wrong brother. Not today. Holy sh Casual almost incest is extremely casual. I'm sure there's an explanation about why this train is here, and how it hooked up with the silver cars, and what happened to the other train that was going backwards, and all its cars, and how the passengers survived while Fuller and Cavendish died in that crash, but I guarantee you, Mooby isn't interested in giving it to us. Time's up, Indian. And by time, I mean the 30 seconds in which I'll train this gun on you while standing on this wobbly train, rather than shooting you right now. Looking past the whole part about John conveniently passing at this point and being able to catch an object that small at this speed, how in the f*** did that kid know that John needed the silver bullet? Always nice to have a lawman on the side of progress. If John's got a moral issue with supporting the fat cats on the railroad, why the hell did he even show up to the f***ing ceremony? I can't stay. I know. You do? Because I sure as f*** don't. John's brother specifically asked him to take his place in the family and protect them. John loves Rebecca and she loves him. So why can't he do his Lone Ranger in close spot? There's nothing holding you here anymore. It's my home. Man, Rebecca just loves having these intensely personal conversations in full view of the public. I guess I should be heading home. Yeah, probably so, since you've been cooped up with a lonely old man for several hours with no parental supervision. Now go away or I shall taunt you a second time! You'll fall too, you will do, you will do, you will do. Do not touch rock. Rock cursed. Damn, we're in a tight spot. Guess I cut out the wrong brother's heart. The wrong kid died. Pretty soon, no one will even know you people were here. What do you mean, you people? What do you mean, you people? Come a time, Kimosabe, when good man must wear a mask. I'm Batman. Drum technique, understand? They're gonna put the guns right here. When they are done, they're gonna leave. Then Tweedledee and Tweedledum can load them up into your little clown car. We got more bouncing California. <laughs>